Hey everyone, in this week's how-to, I'll be going over depth of field, which I mentioned in last week's Cinematography Basics Fundamentals video. Specifically, how to fake depth of field in Photoshop and After Effects. First though, what is depth of field or DOF? DOF, simply put, is how sharp the parts of your image or footage appear. A photo where everything is sharp and in focus is called deep or extended depth of field, while any shot that has a blurred background or foreground has a shallow depth of field. If you want to get an actual shallow depth of field shot, it's controlled by your camera's f-stop, focal length, and how close you are to the subject. The smaller your f-stop and the shorter your focal length, the more DOF you'll have. But let's say you didn't get this shot for the sake of this tutorial, yeah? So I should clarify that there are reasons you would actually want to take a shot where you don't have shallow depth of field, even if you know that's the kind of shot you eventually want. Following a basic rule of any kind of design, you want to start with the most amount of detail as feasibly possible and then work your way smaller and less detailed, or in this case more blurred. Taking a deep DOF shot with all of the detail will give you that much more control over how the final image looks. Also, if you have the deep DOF shot to work with, you have the ability to change your mind later as long as you keep the original file. Sure, right now you might want that shallow DOF shot for a photo contest. But what happens down the road if you get into video and want to use it as part of your footage? If you've only got the blurred image, there's no way to add that detail back in while you can always remove detail if it is there later. That said, how do we do it? First, we start with a deep DOF shot, getting as much sharp detail in the image as we possibly can, and take it into a graphics editor, which for the purposes of this video specifically will be Photoshop. Once it's open, we need to select the subject of the photo. This can be done with the marquee, lasso, wand, or pen tools, depending on your preference. But the goal is to make a selection around the smaller or simpler part of the image so it goes faster. When you have that main subject selected, make the selection into a new layer. To do this, you can go under the Layers menu and Layer via Copy, or you can hit Command or Control J. This will make a copy of your selection into its own layer. Alternatively, you can also Layer via Cut or Command Shift J on a Mac or Control Shift J on a PC. This will make your selection its own layer and remove that content from its previous layer, leaving transparency in its place. I should also note here that there are different degrees of shallow DOF you can get in a photo, and to simulate that you'll need to separate different things. If you want nothing but your subject in focus, for example, you'll want just that subject in its own layer. If you want to get a tunnel effect with detail vanishing the further back into the image you get though, you might instead want to make the foreground, midground, and background into their own separate layers. Basically, the more layers you separate your image into, the more control you'll have over how the DOF is applied. No matter how many layers you make, you might want to take the next step before getting to actually making the DOF. I do tend to go a bit over board, but I also like making any layers I've made for this effect into a smart object by right clicking on them in the layers panel and hitting convert to smart object. I fully acknowledge this is probably a bit over the top, but doing this will let you adjust any filters you apply to the layer after the effect's been applied. For me, it's nice to be able to do that kind of fine tuning after I've worked on everything. With all that done, we move on to making the actual effect. This is actually pretty simple. Just head up to the filters menu and under the blur filters, pick your effect. If you're not trying to fake motion, a Gaussian blur should work just fine. Then we set the blur to whatever fits the image and what you're going for and hit OK. If you've got multiple layers and or smart objects, the rest is just a matter of tweaking the look until you've got exactly what you want. But we're not done yet. As I said, we'll also be going over how to actually animate a fake depth of field, which is a film technique called a pull focus. Firstly, I recommend doing the things I already went over in Photoshop. This time though, stop before applying the blur since that's what we'll actually be animating. I'll then remove any layers that are left over and save the PSD file. Hopping over to After Effects, I then import that PSD file, either by going under the File and Import menu and clicking File, or just by pressing Command or Control. I then select the PSD file, and where it says import as, I pick composition that retains layer sizes. This will give us a comp in the project window and a folder with all of the PSD's layers, which we can then use. You can then open that comp that was created and work directly with it. I then set a Gaussian blur on all of the layers. For a pull focus, you're either focusing in on the subject and gradually blurring the rest of the image out, 
or doing the opposite of that. I'm doing the former here, but just reverse the start and finish if you're going the other way. So I keyframe all of the blurs and adjust them like I did in Photoshop until I have the background focused and gradually get more out of focus the closer I get to the camera lens. I will then go to the point in the timeline where I want my subject to be in focus and animate all of the blurs. I'll set the blur on the main subject to zero and adjust everything else so they get more blurred the further out they are. Also, I tend to set them so they all animate at the exact same rate by having everything keyframed at the exact same times. And that was depth of field. As always, I hope you've all learned something and enjoyed yourself doing it. If you have any questions, thoughts, or other feedback, you can let me know with a comment down below. You can also like this video and share it around, which helps with Google's rankings. And I'm planning to be back here every Friday, so be sure to subscribe for more awesome content. Have a great day, everyone.